So I just finished watching Let That Be Your Last Battlefield and another episode that was just full of potential and a huge letdown. Now it's not to say that this episode didn't have some good things in it because it really had some incredible moments in it. But those moments were so few and so far between and the stuff that filled it in was just poorly written and not well thought out. My first indication to this is the opening, when the Enterprise is going along and they come across this shuttlecraft, and one of the characters, I think it was either Sulu or Chekhov, says something along the lines of, that looks like the uh, shuttlecraft that was stolen from some starbase. That really bugged me. Um, you know, I'm not a, a Star Trek fan at this point, really. Uh, well, okay, I like the show, but I'm not one of these guys that knows every single ship. Um, I'm not going to be able to give you the technical readouts on any of that sort of stuff. But it would seem to me that these shuttlecrafts that they use to go from ship to ship or ships to planets or stuff like that, if they're not using the transporters, wouldn't they all be the same? You have a federation of starships. And yes, I understand the big ships kind of all have their own little design, but even within that, it still kind of looked the same. But the shuttlecrafts. They would just go from place to place. The idea is like anybody could kind of pilot them, and you didn't need to know 30 different types of shuttlecrafts. So how come they know that this is the one that was missing? Did, like, that Starbase have its own special ones? That just kind of seems silly to me. Um, was that craft itself, like, I don't know, painted with Kilroy was here or a coexist bumper sticker on the bottom? Like, how do they know that that's the missing one? To me, that just seems like really poorly thought out writing. Um, instead of saying, hey, there's a shuttlecraft. Hey, we had word that there was a missing one from the space station. Let's take a look, find out if it is. Anyway, that may be a minor gripe, um, but to me, it really did bug me because it just showed that they didn't think out some of those lines really well, and they just kind of wanted to jump into the plot. Um, instead of actually doing a good job setting it up, let's just go into the story. And so the setup I didn't like with that. Anyway, they get this guy, Loke, and he is this alien that they've never seen before. His face is half white, half black. Uh, white on the right side, black on the left. Painted right down the middle. Um, and of course, Spock and McCoy are kind of baffled by it, whatever. The, the, he's in a coma... Uh, so to speak, and he kind of wakes up out of it, and they're talking, and Kirk is there, and some other stuff goes on, and then they get intercepted by this other ship, um, that I'm not really sure how this one worked, he flew his ship into the Enterprise, but dematerialized his ship, but he remained, I think that's how it worked, um, it was really kind of weird. Anyway, there's this other guy who's on the ship who looks like Loke, except this guy's name is Beale. Um, but he's got the opposite. He's got black on the right side of his face and white on the left side. Forced racism, people. And let's get ready for a whole lot of it. Because that's what we're in for. Um, basically... Beale is hunting down Loke, and here, again, is another point where I think we had some really bad writing. He says that he has been searching for this guy for 50,000 Earth years. Let that sink into you. 50,000 of our years, he's been hunting this man down. Dude, at what point were you going to give up? Like, 50,000 years, that's a long time. Um, let's just kind of chart, like, how long humans have been on Earth. You've been hunting one man for 50,000 years? but there, And there's no explanation, like, maybe, they're, maybe their race lives really long. But, I mean, even the fact, like, he's been alive for 50,000 years, at least. Bad writing. Just, it, that's dumb. That's the sort of writing you see from some middle school kid who's writing fan fiction. You know, that's the story of, you know, the, the Jedi Knight, but he doesn't just have a lightsaber. He has a pitchfork lightsaber that shoots Death Star rays or something like that. 50,000 years, give me a break. Just, like, all right, so we're already partway in, and it's just bad writing that's really killing what could have been 
an interesting thing. And I think that's why I'm getting so mad is because this episode had a lot of potential. This felt like a setup for a cool Twilight Zone sort of thing with great social commentary, but we're just kind of being beaten over the head with racism and stupid writing, and it didn't make sense. Anyway, Beale somehow takes over the ship with his psychic powers, um, and he demands that Kirk deliver them to their planet uh, called... Uh, uh, Chevron, I think it is, or Sharon, something like that. Um, this is where things begin to get good again. Uh, because Kirk is like, no, you're not taking over my ship. We need to go to Starbase 4, something like that. And he's like, I have complete control of your ship. You can't do anything about it. And Kirk's like, oh yeah? You're not going to have control of my ship because I'm going to blow it up. And they do this interesting sequence where Kirk, Spock, and Scotty uh, all have to give their command statements for the ship to go into auto-destruct. And once that's set in place, it can't be reversed. I liked it. Um, they built some really cool tension. They did these like cool zoom-ins on their lips and their eyes and stuff. Um, and that was really neat. And I liked it because it took a, a side character like Scotty who is kind of, you know, one of those fan favorites. And I think this gave him more of a big role. And we like seeing that. We love seeing Scotty kind of be the acting captain of the ship at times. Um, that he's more than just a bunch of one-liners. You know, I can't do it, Captain. And and I liked it. it. It really showed us, as his character has some major importance in it, that after Kirk being the captain and Mr. Spock, who, you know, is the first officer, the XO or whatever... Um, Scott is the third highest guy there, and we're seeing more of that, that this character does have some real weight in the story. Anyway, um, Beale gives up, and he's like, alright, Kirk, you do it. And then we go into maybe 20 minutes of the most over-the-top, yet boringly simplistic, Conversations about racism. Uh, Loki um, and has this thing where he talks to some of, them, some of the crew, and like Chekhov and Sulu are there, and he's talking to them about oppression, about how his, his people are oppressed by Beale's people. Um, Beale has this talk with Kirk and Spock, and I think maybe McCoy was there. Um, and I understand what they're going for, you know, the, the idea that, you know, it's not really what we look like on the outside, but what we are on the inside, and skin color shouldn't matter or anything. But he's like, can't you see the difference between us? And they're like, uh, no, you both kind of look the same. He's like, I am white on my right side, or I'm black on my white side, and he is white, and how disgusting is that? And it was so forced. It almost came off as comical. Um... Which is sad because the performance by the actors, especially the guest actors, were remarkable. Their performances were so good. But the writing was bad. It, this felt like it, a Saturday Night Live parody of Star Trek. Um, when Star Trek tried to get really serious and it just became silly. This is like Stephanie Meyer's Twilight trying to be serious. Um... I, you can't do it. Your source material is so ridiculous at this point. No matter how hard you try, you can't make it serious. You know, there's a thing with Twilight with the whole abortion thing at the end. Um, I don't care how serious of a topic abortion is. It's Twilight. You can't make it serious. And that was the thing here. It's just kind of silly. And I'm not saying Star Trek isn't serious, because we have had serious episodes. But this episode in particular has been presented to being so silly that the racism stuff, I'm having a hard time swallowing. And they've simplified it. They've simplified racism to this point of like, oh, he just looks different than me. Now, I am not a sociologist. I have studied sociology in college, and I find it an interesting topic to research, but I'm no means an expert on it. But I can tell you this. Racism is so much deeper than just what color your skin is, and I don't like somebody because of the color of the skin. There are so many more levels to it, and there's so much more going on within it, and it, it extends beyond just the color of your skin. Um, 
And that's how they just simplified this. And I understand this is 1969. Race wars are still going on in the United States. Uh, civil rights are a big issue. But the way they handled this was just too over the top. It was too preachy. If you look at some of the good Star Trek episodes, if you look at a show like The Twilight Zone, when those things took on social commentary, it worked at its best because it was subtle. When I think about the really great Twilight Zone episodes, um, when I think about the, a show like Buffy the Vampire Slayer, uh, which is all about metaphors. When you look at something like Battlestar Galactica and the issues in there, those things worked because they were subtle. Look at, look at you know Buffy with an episode like Hush, which was almost completely done in silence. What did that say about our society and the need to communicate or the way we can communicate that... There were so many beautiful things told in that episode that could never have been told with words. It was subtle. It wasn't forced on us. It wasn't shoved down our throats like, Oh, look at us. We're so in tune with the internet and everything's obsessive and mile a minute and we talk too much and we never listen. It didn't do that. It did it very subtly and very beautifully. This was like somebody trying... Too hard. This felt like Tim Burton with his later material. Um, and I think I've mentioned on the show how much I really do not like Tim Burton as a director. Because his stuff is so over the top. It's so heavy handed. A thing like Big Fish. Um, I hated that movie because he just beat the audience over the head with the concept of, you don't know if this is real, or you don't know if this is made up, like, it's in your face, and oh, we're going back and forth, you don't know if this is real, I felt, like, it was like the scene in, um, oh, what was that stupid Sasha Baron Cohen with, the, uh, Bruno, the scene when he, like, literally beats another man over the head with a dildo, that was this episode, I was being beaten over the head with racism, but a juvenile, simplified, almost narrow-minded approach to what racism is. And I think that's where this episode really struggled, because I love the Star Trek episodes that do deal with things like race and prejudice and those sorts of social commentary issues that were really prevalent in the 1960s and are still applicable today. We still deal with these issues, but not this way. So that was what really bugged me. Um, on top of that, there were just some really bizarre angles in this episode. Um... And weird shots, and they're zooming in on eyeballs, and it all came to a head with the end when Bale and Loki, basically, they finally hijack the ship again to go back to the planet, and they have this chase sequence through the Enterprise. That was just silly. They weren't even really running, they were more prancing around, and there were these artsy angles on it, but they weren't really good ones. Um... It was laughable. I actually found myself laughing because it was so dumb. <sighs> anyway, they get to their planet and they find out the entire planet has been destroyed. Everybody from both of their races has killed each other. They are the only two left. And instead of putting aside their differences and trying to figure out where do we go from here, where do we go from here? They continue to battle. And I like that. This was not the happy Star Trek ending. This wasn't Kirk t talking to them, sitting them down, and explaining to them how they were wrong. Like we've seen in so many other ish episodes where Kirk is the one who knows everything and he will set it right. Um, we didn't have that here. And I liked that. And Kirk basically says 
you know, F you. I'm done. Go kill yourselves. Bye. And leaves. I love that. I don't know how other people felt about that. Um, because it was a little different from the normal Kirk that we've seen, but I like that Kirk better. Because he just didn't care at this point. No matter how much he tried talking to them, he realized they're not going to get it. And if after 50,000 years of you chasing one guy over race relations because his face is the opposite of yours, you're not going to get it. And I think that may have shown some of Kirk's wisdom. Um, so, kind of odd that the ending of this was my favorite part. Because so often in a lot of these episodes, there's a lot of great material, but the endings are a little weak. Um, you know, we usually have the McCoy and Spock banter where they poke fun at each other and then, ha, freeze frame! And... That's it. Roll credits. But not here. And I think that's why I'm so frustrated with this episode. It could have been great. This really could have been a great episode. And I know I've said that about several other episodes. This one, I think, takes it to a whole new level. I loved the idea of two races from the same planet with black and white skin down the middle, but it's just reversed. Um, that could have been done interesting. I like they were trying to tackle racism, but the way they went about doing it was awful. The performances were great. The ending was great, but it was the bad writing. It was the heavy-handed stuff. It was the weird angles. It was the fact that they took an issue that was way too complex, and they just simplified it. So, I know I've talked a lot about this episode. Um, I really want to hear your thoughts on this, guys. So, comment, like, pass this around, um, let's get the word out there, I, I want to hear more about what you all thought of this. So, I think I'm going to try to knock out one more episode today, guys, and I will see you later.